Hey everybody, it's Matt here from Piano Blog. I want to talk about voicing today. Voicing is simply bringing one, now, one note out above another, whether you're playing two notes at the same time, three notes, four notes, being able to bring one note out above another. And this is really helpful when you have a melody and an accompaniment because of course you want the melody to maybe be a little bit louder than the accompaniment. So voicing can have to do with hand independence, with the right hand coming out above the left hand, or it can have to do with independence within the hand. That is, if you have, say, a melody and an accompaniment in one hand, bring that melody out just in one hand. So just as an example of this, uh, I'm actually going to play the first few bars for you of uh, Beethoven's uh, Pathetique Sonata, the second movement, the slow movement. Um, so I'll just read a couple bars of this to get an idea, give you a sense of what's going on here. Maybe you've heard those before. This was actually the first piece that I had a teacher work on the idea, the concept of voicing with me consciously. And so uh, it brings back some memories of, of how I was taught. And there are a couple things that I found in teaching voicing that are really helpful, a couple areas where people mess up. Uh, and l let me give you a simpler idea of voicing. So I'll, I'll go to uh, the first piece that I work with students on um, in my uh, beginner piano course. And the online course uh, is uh, this Ode to Joy. So here you have the Ode to Joy melody. And then there's chords below it. So and you'll notice I play the right hand louder than the left hand. If I wasn't voicing the right hand out, it would sound more like this. You see? And the same thing if I was playing this Beethoven and not voicing the melody out, it would sound like this. can't really track a melody line as opposed to hopefully you can hear the difference where in that case the melody is coming up so uh, there are a couple things to consider here uh, one is more general just in terms of how you think about music and sound control and then one is more specific to practicing voicing so the more general thing is like with anything you're practicing in music anything that has to do with the technique of playing the piano it's really important that you're aiming towards a certain sound concept you have to have some sort of sound concept in mind and that can be something very general um, something very simple or it can be something very complex and nuanced so if you're just starting the sound concept might be I just want my right hand to play louder than my left hand okay so just right hand louder than left hand that might be what I'm going for that's that's the goal of my sound if you're a little more advanced it might be something like I have three voices like in this Beethoven I've got this melody I've got this bass line and I've got this middle and I want the upper voice to have primary import importance the bass voice to have secondary importance and then I want the middle to be a little bit below those so that it's not overwhelming So you see, it's, it's still the same subject, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced, but as you become more advanced, your sound concept becomes more nuanced. You have a better understanding of what it really sounds like to have that control of sound and color at the piano. But the first thing is just to have some sort of goal in mind. Try to uh, get better and better at the ability of visualizing sound in your head so that at first that might be kind of crude it might be a little bit rough around the edges but as you advance 
over the years, it becomes more and more nuanced and more and more vivid in your head, the sound that you're trying to create. Uh, the second thing that's kind of a general concept is you have to have that sound concept, but you also have to have a feedback loop going, like I've talked about in other videos, which means you have to be comparing what's actually coming out of the piano with what's in your head. Uh, a lot of times people really fail on this point because what they think is coming out of the piano isn't actually what's coming out of the piano. It's very, very hard to kind of put your ear out there instead of be trapped in your head and have a, what, a sound in your head that you think is happening but isn't actually coming out. And so I've talked about in other videos how you can really try and put yourself in the position of the audience, how you can kind of project your ear out in front of the piano and sort of disembody the ear from what's happening and all those sort of things. But just learning how to listen in that extreme sort of way so you're getting a more objective sense of what's actually coming out the instrument and then comparing that with what's happening is very important in any sort of sound type practice. Now both of these are things that are skills developed over the years. So don't expect yourself to have total control over your sound quality immediately and don't expect yourself to have a really refined ear where you can really play and listen uh, when you're just starting the piano. I mean, when you're just starting the piano, you're just going to be thinking about, I need to figure out what my third finger is and where this note is and I can play that. I mean, that's the, the end of it. Um, so don't expect it all to come all at once. So those are two general concepts, having a sound concept and getting a feedback loop going where you're actually listening to what's coming out of the piano. Now a really specific concept when it comes to voicing is that most people try to voice too broadly. They'll give themselves an order uh, to the effect of say, I want to bring this line out above everything else and then they'll just try and play it really quickly. So for example, uh, I had a student once who had a lot of trouble playing a, where, uh, that's the Chopin rain, raindrop prelude. He had a lot of trouble bringing the right hand out above the left hand here. And the problem was instead of just sitting there going, okay, what's it sound like just for that one note to bring my right hand out above the left hand, he would just try the whole swath. And then invariably, He'd get in here and he'd not be listening to this at all. It would just sound very muddy, very forced, and there would be no voicing at all. And so he never got to the point of having that muscular control where he could bring one note out above the other. So the point here is sound control is best practiced at first at least by focusing on one instant in time. And for example, here with the Beethoven, when I was first learning to voice, I didn't just try the whole phrase, I just tried the very first notes, like this, and then I would listen to that and think, okay, I want to bring the top out, just on this chord, I just play this. And for hours I would sit there at the piano, okay, now that's coming out, and now I want to bring the bass out a little more. You see, so I would just sit there trying to get that muscular control at the piano, and then you can go on to the next chord. Even now if I was practicing, you'd see me do this. You know, so I, I'm, I'm just picking one instant in time and trying to figure out exactly how to color that chord, how to bring that note out at the top of the chord. I'm not going like this. I'm just playing the whole thing all at once. And then, once I can control those instants in time, I can sort of string everything together in my head. So once I have... Then I can string it all together. Of course, I have the, this issue of the middle voice, too. and start to think of it more as a line. But if I hadn't gone through that first process at the beginning of my training of just trying to voice a specific chord, I would never be able to get to the point of playing the line. It would always uh, feel a little bit forced, at least in most cases. I mean, your mileage may vary. And it's helpful to understand why that's the case, why it's so important to fixate on a specific instant in time when you're talking about 
controlling the sound, controlling the color of the sound and voicing. And that is that what's actually happening when you bring one note out above other notes is that you're moving that key down quicker than the other keys. That's the only way uh, that you can translate uh, into more volume of one note at the piano is that the key actually has to go down quicker because what's happening in the piano you're playing the key it's going down quicker and then the hammer inside the piano is being swung up at the string at a faster velocity okay so that velocity when the hammer hits the string is translating into a louder volume what does this all mean? It means if I have three notes, I've got a bass and a middle and then and a, a soprano line up here. I, if I want to bring the top voice out, if I want to bring that soprano line out, what I have to do is actually start that key descent a little later and move it quicker than the other keys. Now, you don't actually realize this when you're playing, but if you think about the physics of it, that's what has to happen, is that these bottom two notes have to be descending a little slower and this one a little faster. And that's why a lot of times when people first start voicing, the notes don't all sound at the same time because they'll, they'll try to, say, bring this C out, but it'll sound like this. Until they can figure out what it feels like in their body to get that sound out. And the only way to do that, the only way to figure out what that feels like in your body is to fixate on a specific instant in time and then experiment. Just experiment until you can get all the notes to sound at the same time and get the sound you want and then figure out how to do that without tension because a lot of times people will really tense up when they're trying to have this sort of control. So to be able to relax be able to relax and have that sort of sound control. Um, it takes a lot of time. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. We've covered a lot of concepts. We've covered the general concepts of having a sound concept in mind, uh, learning how to listen to yourself, and then experimenting with that sound concept. And that, can, that applies to you know, all music making, really. And then the more specific concept of when you're first learning how to voice, whether you're just playing a melody with chords or whether you're playing Beethoven or Chopin or whatever, fixate on the instant in time, controlling just that chord, figuring out what that sounds like. And if you're getting to, to more and more advanced coloristic pieces like WC Preludes and things, this comes in really handy. I mean, when you're doing work on sound color and things like that, learning how to just fixate on one chord and, and figure out, okay, can I bring out this middle note a little more than this top note? And what's that sound like? How does that change the texture? That's really, really helpful. It's a good skill and a good habit to have. So maybe that's getting a little bit ahead of myself. But if you're working on voicing, and I know a lot of you are because I've had many questions about this, and you're trying to figure out how to bring one note out above the others, uh, that is how I would start. I would start with a sound concept, with a feedback loop, and then don't move fast. Just fixate on one instant in time, one chord at a time, figure out what that feels like, how to play in a relaxed manner, and then string everything together. So if you like this, check out my links. I put links to my piano courses uh, in the description. Make sure you like this channel. There's a like button either here or here. I'm not sure where. And uh, I will try to continue putting out more, more content like that. I love hearing from everyone, so make sure you email me. Uh, matt at pianoblog.com or check me out at pianoblog.com and contact me there. Uh, if you have questions, if this was helpful, I want to hear. If it was not helpful, I, I want to hear. Um, if there's something in specifically that you'd like me to focus on in terms of this subject or other subjects, uh, let me know because that helps me know what type of videos to make. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.